hear us squawk. On this episode of The Pine Talk, Ezra and Peter will share their stock of information to keep you up to date around the clock. Hello and welcome to the third episode of Pine Talk. The podcast for the Pine64 community by members of the Pine64 community. I am Peter, head of the department of boring videos that always look the same at linmob.net. And I am Ezra, internet content creator and software poet. In this episode, we'll be discussing some Pine64 community news, as well as keeping in touch with your questions and feedback. But first, what have you been up to lately? Well, I've been generally disconnecting from online social interactions, trying to relax a bit more. I've actually managed to finish up a personal little website, elitronion.com, where I keep various projects of mine from games to videos. What about you? Well, I've been uh, having a look at all the Manjaro daily dev builds and made a video about that. And... Lately, I've been working on adding app stream IDs to linmobapps.frama.io, that uh, apps app list I maintain. The idea behind this is to have basically clickable links, which then open in a software management app like Discover, so that you can then easily install those apps on your phone. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, but it isn't working yet, so don't know whether it <laughs> will be working uh, once this episode is out or whether I uh, will have to tinker a bit longer on that. Well, I wish you the best of luck for sure. And if I shouldn't be able to make it, maybe someone can help out. That would be highly appreciated. Okay, now let's get to the topics. We're going to start by mentioning the community update. As they mentioned, a lot of interesting stuff, uh, starting with the Quartz 64. So the Quartz 64 single board computer is featuring that Rockchip RK3566 quad-core Cortex-A55 processor, which is clocked up to 1.8 GHz and has an ARM Mali G52 GPU, which is supporting OpenGL ES up to 3.2 and Vulkan 1.1. So that's a pretty good GPU and it's also supported by the Panfrost driver in the Linux kernel. So yeah, GPU acceleration is going to work on that thing basically like out of the box. Uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, what's also great is it's going to have up to 8 gigabytes of RAM. Um, LPDDR4 RAM, which is actually a step up from uh, the Rock Pro 64, which tops out at 4 gigabytes of RAM. And this is not the Pro model, so I think that's quite nice to have more RAM because, you know, if you're running those Electron apps, <laughs> mm -hmm. they will eat up all your RAM. Um, <laughs> but then, uh, do you really run Electron apps on a single board computer? But there are going to be use cases where uh, more RAM is going to prove really useful, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. If if for nothing else, n not that you use a single board computer for this either, but uh, web browsers and web browsing yeah. can also uh, take a lot of RAM. Yeah, this could maybe uh, even be some kind of internet terminal mm -hmm. that you could use. So with graphics acceler acceleration and enough RAM. Um, of course, the next thing is storage, and there it has SPI flash. Uh, you can use an optional EMMC module uh, with up to 128 gigabytes of capacity. You can boot it from a uh, microSD card, and it has a serial ATA3 port, so uh, you can connect a regular good old hard disks or hard disk style SSD drives, which is mm. quite handy as well. The Quartz 64 has uh, support for HDMI 2.0 HDMI 
4K60A up to 4K 60 FPS, uh, which is pretty cool. And a four lane EDP up to 2560 by 1600 at uh, 60 hertz. And a four lane MIPI DSI up to 1440p. SPI touch panel port and SPI with interrupt. I'll be honest, I only know what HDMI is in the, in the list of things there. Yeah, EDP is embedded display port, so that's for uh, connecting a screen right to the single board computer, uh-huh. like you would with an internal screen. And MIPI DSI is something else that might be for e ink displays. I'm not totally certain there, but uh, yeah, can make sense. Another kind of way to connect a display and the rest is for touch panels oh, mostly well, that's and pretty cool. controls so yeah otherwise it has a camera four lane MIPI CSI camera interface up to 8 megapixels which is also fairly nice mm-hmm. um, and networking is up to gigabit ethernet so that's pretty cool and then you've got optional Wi-Fi and up to Wi-Fi AC, so that's Wi-Fi 5, I think, uh, by the uh, newer convention. And you've got Bluetooth 5.0 with SDIO, but both of those those are optional. You got uh, USB 3. No, you got three USB 2.0 host ports and one USB 3.0, which is, uh, that's pretty, that's pretty good. You can, there's also, um, two 10 pin GPIO headers, uh, PCIe, two, two X open ended slot for PCIe 2.0. Wait, I'm, am I reading this right? How am I not reading this right? The PCIe thing. Yeah. Oh, that's difficult. <laughs> I think it's, uh, um, it's a PCIe 2.0 that's the standard and then 1x is the bandwidth so with right. graphics cards we've got those uh 8x mm-hmm. uh, no 16x 16. interfaces usually yeah and uh so 1x is basically uh the the uh, smallest one and the slot is open ended so that um you can put in cards that um maybe would also work with PCI E4X, uh, and you can then use them at lower speeds. So that mm. could be, for example, be used for to connect some NVMe drive. So you're mm. not going to get the full speed then, but uh, you can at least connect it. Mm-hmm. That can be good. And I heard of of um, uh, this could be interesting for uh, I, um, like a. Uh, Converters uh, for external graphics cards. I've seen that you that use NVMe. Is that is that right? Yeah, but then you could maybe put that graphics card right into PCIe, right? <laughs> so anyway, moving yeah. on. <laughs> uh, there's a clock, yeah. RTC battery connector. Yeah, for real time clock, and then <laughs> um, power is supplied where. 12 volts, 3 ampere DC barrel jack, so that amounts to 36 watts. And it has a battery, a, a, be- a connector for lithium batteries, so that you can power it by a battery too. Uh, essentially, with all these features, you could develop, uh, or you could build your own Pine Phone uh, 2 or something already. It would be really chunky and Mm -hmm. thick but uh you could do it yeah Uh, and it Uh, would be quite wide because the dimensions of the board are (laughs) 13.3 times 8 times 1.9 centimeters to not put it in millimeters i don't know what that is in inches i'm sorry uh uh, neither do i (laughs) (laughs) yeah i'm getting uh i'm getting pretty inspired with uh a few ideas um if not for creating a pine phone replacement uh but to replace or to create um well i suppose embedded machines 
uh, I think it could be fun to to connect up uh, some touch display to this and have uh, some kind of uh, like the Google Home uh, things with the with the displays, or I think Amazon has one too. So you could easily create a, a touch screen smart home appliance that's uh, fully open source. Yeah, and you can then run My- Minecraft on it. Like yeah, you can. exactly. On the Pine phone, but we're going to get to that later. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, now, they are also ma- um, g- going to supply that uh, 10.3-inch ink display, so that plan is still going on too. So that's something I was excited about earlier. And it runs f- faster than the predecessors so this is going to eventually replace the pine a64 and the rock 64 uh and it's yeah running quite cool which is mm-hmm. nice so because other embedded systems really need that passive cooling and this thing can run under load without any coolers and it doesn't get older than like uh, hotter than 60 degrees celsius so yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. Of course, development is uh, just starting, and uh, I think it will, as always, take a while until if we're going to have good mainline Linux support. But the components and the design of the device look really promising, so I'm quite excited about that. Yeah, yeah. And we don't only have the Quark 64. But we have a RISC-V single board computer with two RISC-V system on it chips on it. Yes, we do. And this is quite an interesting thing. So one of those chips is a one we don't is one we know already, and that's the Buffalo BL602, which is if you know it, maybe from that Nutcracker challenge, is a thing that does Wi-Fi and Bluetooth low energy. So that's going to be used for connectivity on this device. And then there's the main system, and that's a 64-bit RISC-V CPU or system on a chip, and that's the Orbiner XUNT C906 system on a chip it uh is um clocked at up to one gigahertz usually is made in a 22 nanometers manufacturing process it has a gpu but it's only a 2d accelerator uh it has a vpu that's for uh that's a video processing unit that supports h6 h265 and h264 System memory, well, we don't know that yet. So apparently uh, 64 megabytes to 256 megabytes of DDR3 can be built into the processor. So that would be on package, is what they call that. Or you can uh, also add external memory. So that's a different chip on the mainboard. And uh, it supports storage via microSD socket and um, can s- supports also uh, HDMI out at I think up to full HD at 60 uh, frames per second. Um, it can support a gigabit Ethernet, Mac, uh, the w- w- Wi-Fi and Bluetooth mod- module. We know what that is, and uh, it has USB 2.0. So, and so I would guess that it's going to have 512 megabytes or of RAM or less. So it's likely either 512 megabytes or 256, which kind of limits uh, the use cases for this system, uh, for this single board computer. But I think it's still a nice to have uh, such an affordable. Risk five computer. What do you think, Asa? I agree. Yes, uh, that's that's the reason I'm most excited about this is because uh, uh, I want to get, I want to play with 
uh, some Risk Five stuff, and uh, most other boards uh, that I know of, uh, they're not as affordable. I, I like the price. Yeah. I like its size, and I like um, it, that it's it's really more of a, um, as far as I see it, uh, something to experiment with Risk Five on. It's a nerd yeah, device. I think- I, I agree. I think there was another board uh, in around this price bracket that was announced by maybe it was Sci Fi itself um, previously using, uh, by the way, the same um, main system on a chip. But still, um, the fact that this is also using a Risk V chip for Wi Fi and Bluetooth mm-hmm. uh, makes it double the fun. So you can then use one single board computer to play with risk 5 64 bit and risk 5 uh, 32 bits <laughs> and yeah that that architecture still feels quite foreign to me i i've got to say mm-hmm. uh we, because there are all those letters that uh, then get added up to it and in the end and that's why we've uh, put a link into the show notes uh, linking to an article by CNX Software that is called Risk Five Basis and Extension Explains, where you can read uh, up on all that stuff. Because, yeah, why mm. why would we talk about it when we still don't really know <laughs> what all of that means in practice and layman's terms? Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm I'm definitely uh, going to uh, get one of these. And maybe use it as a pie hole if that should work on the Risk Five platform already, because it sounds like it could do that, even if it just, uh, even if it should have just uh, two hundred fifty six megabytes of RAM, that could be enough for some DNS magic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I think we might continue now uh, to something we know a lot more about. <laughs> And that is the Pine Phone. <laughs> so there, there's been some Pine Phone news too in this show and tell February community update. And of course, uh, there's something with that we already discussed, uh, like open sourcing the modem and all of that stuff. But there's also news about that keyboard that they're going to do. And we now know that the default OS that is going to be on the Pine phones is Manjaro Plasma Mobile. Yeah. What do you think about that? About the OS or the keyboard? Ah, uh, first about the keyboard. Well, I I think the keyboard is really cool, uh, and I can't wait to see um, how it is in um, practice. Uh, I enjoy the massive battery compartment that it holds. Oh, yeah. Uh, 6,000 milliamp hours. Yeah, that's, that's really like double the capa- ca- capacity of the Pine phone. It's, so it's, you're tripling active battery life if you're using that thing. Yeah, I see. You get a keyboard and you get more power. I don't see the negative. Uh, well, it's I mean, more bulky. <laughs> more bulky. That could be a pro, depending on who you ask. Uh, <laughs> but no, I uh, always know where my phone is because it's giant. <laughs> yeah, you can't miss it. That's for sure. And you'll get people asking, "Hey, what's that?" And you can be like, "Oh, this. It's just my Pine phone with the keyboard attachment." Yeah. What about you? Yeah, I'm. I'm uh, also quite excited for that. You know, I. Um, did that uh, Scion f- uh, Series 5 PDA mod where I just took that main board out of the thing and then co- used that uh, former PDA as a Pine Phone keyboard. But this is uh, just a lot better in the finished product. So I'm, I'm quite excited about that. I'm... Uh, really curious how easy it will be to uh, put the Pine phone in and out of that case. Mm-hmm. And well, how how well that how well I can get used to that keyboard because 
turns out with my uh, keyboard I built myself, I'm not using it that much. Um, but then, yeah, it doesn't really fit as well, and I can't close the thing with the pine phone in it. So this is an entirely different story. Mm -hmm. And the battery alone makes this uh, really attractive because let's say you carry uh, your pine phone and uh, the 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 keyboard case uh, with you and you don't have the pine phone in that keyboard case all the time uh, then you can put it in once your battery is running out and <laughs> <laughs> it's basically charging again so maybe that would work but we will have to see whether that will actually work in practice mm -hmm. and how, how easy it will be to do phone calls still so um from what I read in the comments of the community update, uh Lukash recommends using a headset. And well I mostly try to use a headset for phone calls anyway, so that sounds reasonable to me. Mm -hmm. But then uh of course if you have to answer phone call quickly, uh if you've got a wired headset, that always takes some time, so yeah. We will see, but generally, this is uh, qu a quite exciting news regarding the keyboard. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing we don't have to worry about with this keyboard is we won't have to worry about those Fosh top and bottom bars um, in that keyboard case in landscape mode because Plus Mandrao Plasma Mobile is the new default PinePhone mm -hmm. OS. Um, have you used it lately? What do you think? Uh, I have not. I've seen your video about, well, about Plasma Mobile. Uh, I haven't even checked out Manjaro Plasma Mobile yet, but, uh, I did want to. Um, I think it just try guesstimating on how the experience would be. Uh, I know that the Plasma Mobile team has been doing a good job, have, have been adding a lot of uh, new things and definitely making a familiar environment to your standard Android user and Apple user too. It looks more like a traditional phone experience, uh, what they're trying to design. And oh, I, I like Manjaro. I, I like the openness they provide. So I see, I see Manjaro Plasma Mobile being a, a good choice, uh, even though I haven't used it yet. <laughs> What about you? Have you used it? Yeah, use it? I'm. Uh, I'm using it. I've been using uh, the well, the not unstable version that doesn't get updated all the time for a while, of, on and off. And um, now I'm uh, after the video. I kept using this unstable version, which is really moving fast. Of course, this sometimes means that stuff breaks, and then you get another update, and it's fixed again. <laughs> uh, but it didn't break uh, in a way that uh, would have rendered it unusable so yeah you can I think after using it like that for uh, like three to five days not really sure how long I have that yeah anyway and it didn't break completely I think it's almost safe to use and in this unstable version, especially, it's really fast and smooth. So that's talking animations. Not everything is really uh, fast and smooth, but it's the best I've seen uh, Plasma perform, like, ever on the Pine phone. I mean, app start times of heavy apps are not that aren't quicker than they are anywhere else because, well... Yeah, that's that's the Auburn A64. That's to blame for that. Um, but generally, this is nice, and it's only has has only been getting better. Mm -hmm. I've also been playing uh, with uh, web apps in Anglefish for a bit, so that's a feature that works now. So it's been there for a while, but I never got it to work. But uh, if you are on a website that can be used as a web app, like, for example, hydrogen.element.io, which is a mobile element client for the web, 
and then you hit add to home screen, then you will have a home screen item that you can then tip and it's basically uh, a Chromeless uh, web app window. That feature is especially important because Firefox doesn't really run well on Plasma Mobile yet and you can't use Chromium uh, with Ozone because then the keyboard doesn't show up. So there are, there are still quite some bugs to fix. Also, if I may have one feature request, I would really like a feature similar to Scale to Fit on Fosh for Plasma Mobile so that we can use all those apps that don't quite fit the screen and haven't been optimized for the phone. I believe that's not really fitting in with their philosophy, but it would be really nice to have that because it just adds so much usefulness. But then again, eventually apps will be converted or adjusted and you know they 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 will have some time until this uh, gets chipped on the post community edition pine phone and i'm really really sure that it's going to be really great then and it's going to be and i'm really uh, putting myself myself on a soapbox here and saying this is going to be the best os <laughs> the pine phone has ever shipped when it then ships i'm pretty sure of that you heard that, Manjaro? Plasma Mobile? Yeah, that's that's quite the endorsement, huh? <laughs> Who would have thought? No, I, yeah. I'm definitely going to be flashing that soon. You really should. Yeah, Honestly. Sure. Yeah, all right. I guess I know what my next video is going to be about. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. Yeah. Anyway. Great. We can we can get into your um, your at home feedback and questions. Yes, let's do that because after all, this is not Ezra and Peter talking. This is a community podcast, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, let's get started. So I'm going to butcher this nickname. I'm sorry. Uh, Logan Kine at Fosterdon.org asks: Have you all tried? SXMO on PinePhone. I know it sounds crazy, but W W D W M is the best and fastest interface I've ever used on a phone. It's amazing how much you can do with only three buttons and a tiling window manager. Sarza, have you used SimpleX Mobile? Uh, I, all, I I I partially used it once, but uh, definitely not enough to say that I actually did in fact use it so uh, i don't have experience with that but we'll check it out soon <laughs> <laughs> right after that manjaro plasma video yeah, exactly <laughs> what about you <laughs> yeah i've i've had a look at it uh multiple times and i've even uh, installed it on one of my pine phones prior to this recording and I mean, I like that idea. I like that they uh, don't just have those button presses that I can't remember, but also gestures that I might eventually be able to remember if I use it for a long time. But there's my problem. I'm really struggling to use this. You know, when I want to suspend it, it's not tapping the power button once because that's doing something else. So I, uh, ah, it's just breaking my muscle memory I've developed with phones over the years. And I've been a, a tiling the window manager user, but I don't know. It's different having three keys on a Pine phone <laughs> to having a full uh, keyboard with all those modifier keys and stuff that you then uh, use. So. Well, maybe, maybe I'm going to have more fun with it once that keyboard dock is there. <laughs> I mean, that might change the game with SXMO for me. But for now, I have to say, I just can't wrap my brain around it. I'm sorry, I'm I'm not stupid. Uh, I'm not smart enough. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm not smart enough. I'm I'm too stupid. That's what I wanted to say. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I, I I think the idea of a tiling window manager on a phone is interesting though because it's a it's a new concept, and I wonder if it can be um modernized uh, to some degree uh, as time goes on. But then again, I haven't experienced X SX MO on the Pine phone yet, so. Yeah, I mean, I've I've used basically tiled, uh, window manager like stuff on phones before. You know, on Android you can uh, make it so that you can uh, use two apps at once, but that's way easier than using SXMO, <laughs> at least to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, while I I really like using two apps at one time. I just can't remember all these gestures. And, you know, if I can't even suspend that phone reliably, then I'm going to run out of battery no matter what. But I have to say it's quick and that keyboard, once you get used to it, is quite nice too. So, and by the way, I can remember the keyboard gesture. So, yeah, um, I guess not all is lost and... If I were forced to use it for, I don't know, a week, I <laughs> maybe would be able to do so efficiently. But uh, I, there, there's quite some hurdle to overcome initially. And that's what I'm struggling with. You can find the dot on the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> next, next up, uh, Mark at metalhead.club asks, how far off is a Risk Five Pine phone? Well, Mark, as we uh, discussed earlier, you could get yourself the Risk Five board, and oh no, we were saying that about the quartz board. Well, pick up the Risk Five yeah. board and make a pine phone out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could, you could, you could maybe try that. Uh, I don't know whether it has the interfaces to connect a screen to it, and. How you would connect a, a modem, but um, in theory, you could build that. But I think, um, yeah, that's quite a way off. Honestly, <laughs> I, I wouldn't expect any Risk Five phone before. Well, well, you know, whatever I say. If I say, well, before next year, then uh, I may be right technically because there's going to be one uh risk five phone in china because i recently i just remember that i recently read that android had been ported over to risk five hmm. uh so yeah there might be some people working on that on a risk five phone but a risk five pine phone i don't see that coming in the next four years honestly there's so much to do with uh generally getting Linux to run properly on Risk Five first. Then it would be nice to have a Risk Five powered LTE modem too. Those I don't know of anything like that or well by then it would be five G, right? A mm. Risk five five G modem. <laughs> Tons of fives in there. <laughs> um but yeah I, I don't see that coming anytime soon. But then he put the uh Winkies a smiley in there so <laughs> yeah it's more joke question so thank you mark for that one yeah liam smith emailed us saying i would like to hear your opinion on pine making workstations obviously something like avantex or solid run would be amazing and i am sure that pine could make it at a more accessible price do you think that this will happen or is pine still too much of a fringe project to catering to it or yeah to cater to a tinker audience oh yeah uh we had to look those workstations up <laughs> earlier mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i'm glad we did because i wouldn't have guessed how much money you can pay for <laughs> an arm <laughs> workstation <laughs> um well you know those those advan avantech uh workstations start at something like uh 
three thousand US dollars, if yeah, that's the, the right currency even. The low low price. <laughs> yeah, that's their lowest price one, and they've got one that's at five figures, so uh, eleven thousand. Mm -hmm. And they look like uh, your standard desktop computer, and then they've got like thirty two cores and so on. So uh, yeah. Well, I definitely am not going to get one of those. Um, and with Solid Run, uh, you can actually get a mini ITX board for seven hundred fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, then, but then you would have to add the RAM. Uh, but I think it takes standard laptop DDR four RAM. So maybe uh, you have that already, <laughs> and um, yeah would have to add a case and so on to have a full workstation so you would be talking about a thousand dollar system then and that would have a 16 core nxp ship in it that has 16 cortex a72 cores so yeah now we didn't talk to lukash before about this question so uh, we really don't know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, I, uh, I, I think I would actually rather buy an ARM computer by that fruit company than getting one of these things. Mm -hmm. How about you? Yeah, same. Uh, I mean, <clears throat> my pocket, my pockets aren't that deep to begin with. Uh, but um i mean they, I, like i don't know how powerful they are like bang per buck necessarily uh but i don't know to me they don't seem worth it yeah it's it's maybe worth it if you just have those arm workloads like if you mm -hmm. don't want to cross compile for some reason and you need to build all those packages for your Linux distro all the time on an ARM machine and that stuff could save time so if you're a company that has to build tons of packages all the time for the ARM platform I mean mm -hmm. uh, if you save time by that then that's worth the money but for a normal uh, person even an ARM enthusiast I really don't uh, see why people would get that i mean i i rather have to say that i rather understand those people that uh, have invested in that high five unmatched risk five workstation because that has this novelty of risk five to it that makes it more exciting than one of these arm workstations uh now do we think that this would be a product for pine 64 honestly we don't know you know maybe if TL gets it into his head and he's like, hey, I want to have this now, then they might make some. But um, we don't know what's going in in other people's brain, do we? No. Yeah. Well, like, the, the only thing... I mean, if it, there's also the fact that, you know, if there's a desire, a large enough desire, I'm sure they'd consider it. Uh, since it is kind of near their domain, but uh, I don't see yeah. that uh, as being their their focus. I think they're going to focus more on smaller embedded systems. Yeah, I I think that too, because it's it's really hard. I mean, even if you make it a lot cheaper uh, than uh, these workstations um, at the same performance, I think that some cheap AMD Ryzen or Threadripper build, well, not really in that price range, but mm -hmm. uh, or maybe in that Avantex <laughs> price range, right? <laughs> but uh, would still likely uh, be better in terms of performance per dollar. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that makes it a lot less interesting generally. Lastly, we try to keep improving that's why we're including chapter markers on the video platforms this time and a link to the full show notes of the episode so that video users don't miss out 
the podcast is in progress of being listed in all the directories you suggested. We are still working on that because it's really hard, unfortunately, to get that done. And yeah, we'll eventually not mention this anymore once we can report full success. Also, if you are using the MP3 feed, check out the chapter markers. Thanks again to NerdZoom Media for being our audio producers. And that's it for this episode. Thank you for listening. We'll be back in two weeks. Remember, this is a community podcast, so please leave feedback on what we should do better, what we should talk about, and get your suggestions in and feel free to ask questions. Every question is welcome. You can join the Discord channel. Pie Talk, Pine Talk Podcast on Pine 64's Discord. You can send us an email at pinetalk at pine64.org. And tweet at us. We're at TalkPine. <laughs> yep. Have a great two weeks and talk to you soon. Yeah. So is we, we love spending time with you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.